You are now entering Clearview, Illinois City Limits. Tonight's tale is called Meet My Newest Sleep Paralysis Demon. I've had sleep paralysis for as long as I can remember. It's when the body goes to sleep, but your mind keeps going. It's said that when you're in this state, you're one foot in the real world and one in dream. Have I had experiences with sleep paralysis demons? Oh yeah, absolutely I have. At this point, I've given them names. While I don't have these little encounters with these dream demons every night, you best believe when I do, I never forget them. The one that I see more than most is a tall man with no face who stands in the corner shadow and watches me sleep. He's the most frequent and perhaps the creepiest, but he by far isn't the scariest. The centipede man that crawls over my face takes the title for scariest. I hadn't gotten an appearance from different sleep demons in five years, but the other night I did. It started with mundane restlessness, as most of my instances of sleep paralyzation does. I get hung up on some aspect of my life, and I can't turn my brain off. There was a gentle rapping of branches from the tree outside on the window, whose cadence relaxed me until I drifted off, my mind still furiously churning out scenarios of doom. Truth be told, I didn't know when I slipped away. I can never tell in the moment until something odd happens. After contemplating if I was going to have enough money saved up for a trip to Vegas next month, my mind drifted to the gentle tapping on my window. I watched as the clipping of the branches stopped and there was a slow and methodical creaking from my window slide and open. I instinctively attempted to get up and check the window, but my body was out to lunch. My eyes stretched out, but they too were paralyzed, and I could only make out what was directly in my front view. From the corner of my eye, I saw a small, shadowy figure slink into my room. The creature was small, about as small as a little dog, but walked on two legs. It drug something in its hand that was half the size of its body. This entity seemed more or less ambivalent to my presence, while most of the other dream demons seemed as if I was always their first concern. The creature leapt and climbed on furniture with ease dragging its bowl, I guess. It was hard to fully make out in the long shadows of night. It seemed to be collecting things in my room. When it had exhausted every single avenue in the shadow, then it turned its sights on me. It hopped up to my bed and I could even feel the weight shift. It hopped onto my chest and though it wasn't heavy, I felt the pressure. My mind trembled in fear even though my body took no part in this. Unlike the other sleep demons, this one didn't seem certain of his part. He didn't seem as if he were here for me at all. It was more an incidental coincidence that I was there. It looked like a small monkey that held a decayed human skull in its hand. It still had remnants of grayish flesh hanging on. The eye sockets were hollow and dark as the shadows it slipped into. The monkey carefully pushed my soft half-opened eye before I got the chance to think the worst. The little thing melted into the shadow and all but disappeared. I didn't think to mention it to anyone, but then again I never did. These creatures I tended to see were mine to handle, not theirs. I carried on with my day-to-day activities and readied for work. I lived alone and unlike the old spinster cliche, I didn't go the cat route. I wasn't the type of person that had the patience for pets. I slipped out about 6 a.m. and returned home about 6 p.m. There were children playing in my driveway. I didn't mind. In fact, it was as close as I cared to be to having my own children. A few Dennis the Menace-like kids running in my grass from time to time felt like a little spice thrown into my rather safe and mundane existence without all the responsibility of having to keep children alive. Hey, Mrs. Taylor, said Ralph or Raphael, the 10-year-old. He was still young enough that I could tell him not to do something and the fear of any adult reprisal still had weight. Once I reached my teens, I began to realize that all the adults weren't as on it as I thought when I was a child and there was only so much power strange adults had over me. 
Hey, how are you? I said, careful not to guess the kid's name wrong. I'm okay. I noticed that Ralph was wearing an out-of-place Rolex watch on his wrist that suspiciously looked a lot like mine. Where did you get that watch? I asked as Ralph circled back around in my driveway to meet my gaze. It was in the grass, he said. For some reason, I didn't believe he was lying, but on the same note, I didn't believe it. I didn't ask any further questions about it and figured I should check my house just in case it happened to be someone else's misfortune. I checked my house from top to bottom and for the life of me, I couldn't find my watch. Ralph wasn't outside now and had found some other poor sap's driveway to dart in and out of. I didn't pay it much mind and I was certain that I'd find my watch. In the end, it was probably just a coincidence. When I went to sleep, I woke in the middle of the night. I could feel the breeze from the open window. As I thought to get up, the same little demonic monkey hopped on my bed. It approached me slowly, inched towards me, except this time I was not locked in my own head. My arms were free to move as they pleased. Whatever the thing was didn't appear as if in my dream, but in fact had woken me up. As it moved forward towards my face, I sprung into action. I collapsed the covers into a trap and pulled the little thing off the bed. To say it was strong was an understatement. It flailed and fought so hard into the covers that I took the entire bedroll and shoved it through the window. I watched as the bundle cascaded to the grass and the monkey snatched up its skull and sprinted into the night. I watched the shadow of the creature running down the block. I reached under my bed that clipped my Glock and ran outside. I was never a victim, and seeing I wasn't living with a man or a protector of any kind, I had to be enough. I ran outside in my pajamas and charged the same way I saw the thing go. As I crossed the street, I noticed my lipstick in the Tony's yard. Without much of a search, I saw some of my earrings on the porch of a neighbor I didn't know. I hustled over with my gun held low. As I got to the door, I could see the window was pushed open and a few more of my trinkets laying haphazardly on the ground. I banged on the door and rang the bell frantically, and in my over-eagerness to get to the bottom of things, I twisted the front knob. The door irked open. In the darkness, there was a moldy smell that held my nose under arrest and the blue light of a television which was displaying the Idol logo. I turned on the light and nearly dropped my gun in horror. The little monkey was shoving shiny rings into the desiccated and nearly hollowed head of a musty dried up corpse. When presented with the sudden blast of light, the little creature hissed at me, snatched the skull from its neck and ran off. I had seen enough. Now that I knew my demon was real and not just some figment of my mind, I knew all I needed to. I turned the light off and let my neighbor sleep. After calling the cops in the weeks that followed, I got little tidbits of information like Mrs. Simon had a helper monkey and she most likely died months ago with no one to check on her. A horrible oversight, but the only one who hadn't abandoned her, it seemed, was Keystone, the little helper monkey that watched over what was left. Maybe the little guy moved on, maybe he didn't, but as of now, Keystone and the head of Miss Simon are still out there, and if any of my demons think they ever want to become real, let's just hope for their sake they come back bulletproof. You are now exiting Clearview, Illinois, City Limits. Hope you enjoyed the trip.